Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing a proof by induction video on a certain type of proof by induction question, which are the series questions. So I'm going to be doing a walkthrough on one of them. And they're usually pretty straightforward, but they can get quite tricky if you don't know what to do or you don't know what to factor. So as usual, the first thing that you do is you prove n equals 1 is true. Okay. So the first thing I like to do after that is create my LHS and my RHS, which is my left hand side and my right hand side. And then I just plug in one. That would turn into one times one factorial, one factorial is one. So it's overall just one. My LHS is for one. Then I can do my RHS and plug in n equals one. So that turned into one plus one factorial minus one is equal to two factorial minus one is equal to one. And remember our RHS will always be equal to our, our LHS. And remember to plug your n equals one into this, not this, because remember it says plug, prove that n equals one is true, not r equals one. That's a lot of mistake that people make and it's good to avoid that in the exam. So our next step is going to be assume sorry let's assume all. n equals k is true. So in this case remember you plug into your n that turns into k plus 1 factorial minus 1. And remember, I'll just rewrite our sigma function so it's easier to understand what n equals k actually means. And then that's just r, r factorial equal to this so that means our k we're just assuming that n equals k is true then the next thing that i want to do is using assumption show because you're showing now that that n equals k Plus one is also true. Here's a little trick that my teacher told me. You can always write that you're trying to show that that your new sigma function is going to look like this. So it's, you're going to have k plus one on top. And then this is going to look like we usually our ter terms. This will be k plus 2 factorial minus 1. Okay, so the same thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create my LHS, my RHS. And remember, my RHS is just what I'm trying to show, which is k plus 2 factorial minus 1. I'll put a nice box around it. So my LHS, this is just going to be the summation up till the kth term. So that k plus 1 to term. That's just going to look like R1 plus R2 plus R3 all the way up to RK and then you also add on the RK plus one term. So this whole thing is just summation up till N equals K, right? And if you look back previously, that's in our assumption we're show, assuming that n equals k is true in the first place. So we already assume that our assumption is k plus 1 factorial minus 1. So we're going to assume the same thing, k plus 1 factorial minus 1. Then we're going to plug in the r k plus 1 term. Plus k plus 1 term. And now this is another mistake that a lot of people uh, make is that they usually plug in k plus 1 in this. But no, because 
this is the term that you're summing up. You're trying to find k plus 1 here. So you're going to do k plus 1 plus k plus 1. And then, it, since it's the term, remember, if you look at our sigma function here, it's k, it's k plus 1 factorial. Now, what I realize is that my minus 1s are on both sides. I'm just going to take them off, put them to the side. I'll rewrite this as k plus 1 factorial plus k plus 1, k plus 1 factorial again, minus 1. And then I realized that, okay, this simplified it a bit further. How can I do that? I see k plus 1 is similar on both sides. The, the two things that we're adding. So let me factor that out. That'll turn into 1 plus k plus 1 minus 1. And this is just k plus 1 factorial k plus 2 minus 1. Okay, and I see it's still not the same, but they're getting closer together. So, and then I realize, okay, this is just k plus 2 factorial minus 1 because if you look at it in the way 7 times 6 factorial is just 7 factorial because this is 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 if you add a 7 times it just turns you're adding your 7th your your 7th term on and that turns into your 7 factorial so as you can see, our LHS is now equal to our RHS. And yeah, that is true. Okay, and the last thing that you have to do after that is you have to write a proof statement. And all that is, is you're going to write, since it's true for n equals 1, which is first positive integer. And if true for n equals k which you assume to be true then it's also true for n equals k plus 1 then true for all positive integers and you can denote that like this and this is your worth this is worth your last and final mark uh, in these type of questions. And it's very important to put them if you get all the way to the end. If you don't, then it's okay. Uh, I'm not sure. And I don't think you will get the mark if you don't do any of the other working. But you can try your best in your n equals k plus 1 stages and your n equals k stages. Anyways, thank you for watching. Uh, I will be releasing other types of videos for proof by induction, other types of questions pretty soon. Uh, yeah.